John of Damascus is the father of the church, most well known for his defensive icons during the iconoclast controversy. He also wrote one of the earliest Christian polemics against Islam. His major work is called The Fount of Knowledge, and in it he devotes one of his chapters on heresies to listing out every single heresy that he has come across. In this chapter, there is a section on the Ishmaelites. And this is one of the first recorded Christian critiques of Islam. John lived his entire life under the Umayyad Caliphate, and he knew Arabic. He was also familiar with the Quran as well as some of the extra Quranic traditions that would become the Hadiths. So here is how John describes Islam. He calls it a superstition that keeps people in error. He also says that Muhammad put many ridiculous compositions in the Quran and he gave it to his people as an object of veneration. For John, Islam is a religion of absurdities and he devotes the rest of the text to going through some of them. John rightly finds Islamic claims about the Kaaba ridiculous and he explains how there's no way Abraham is associated with the Kaaba, which is clearly a relic from pre-Islamic paganism. He also says that the stone is specifically associated with Aphrodite, and while I don't think there's much strong evidence for this claim, given that John was well informed about all of Muhammad's sexual perversions, can you really blame him for drawing this connection? John also points out the clear error in the Quran that claims that Mary, the mother of Jesus, is also the sister of Moses and Aaron. While Moses and Aaron did have a sister named Miriam, that's a different Mary, and the two are separated by over a thousand years. John is suspicious of the fact that Muhammad received his revelations in private. He compares this to all the miraculous public events surrounding Moses and Jesus. Muhammad and his followers have no such evidence to support his claim of prophethood. John also criticizes the Quran's claim that Jesus was not crucified, nor that he was the Son of God, both of which entirely contradict all genuine Christian witness from the centuries prior. John is also critical of the laws that Muhammad enjoins. They are neither Jewish nor Christian, so Islam seems really confused on this point. The Muslims circumcise not only the men but also the woman, and they don't keep the Sabbath or any Jewish dietary laws but they have their own dietary laws. This means that Islam is at best a perversion of the Jewish and Christian traditions, and at worst a complete novelty and imposter. John is disgusted at some of the behavior that the Quran allows. He points out that Muhammad makes legal provisions for taking four wives and as many concubines as one wishes. He also sees as immoral Muslim customs around divorce and remarriage. He points out that Muhammad made it legal to put away whichever wife one might wish and should one so wish to take to oneself another in the same way. This is terrible from John's perspective because divorce and remarriage in almost all circumstances is seen as adultery in Christianity. John also recounts the story of Muhammad lusting after Zaid's wife and then commanding them to divorce so that he can marry her. One thing that John fails to mention here is that Zaid was not just Muhammad's companion, but even worse, his adopted son. So Muhammad married his daughter-in-law after causing the divorce. Not exactly something you want in a prophet. And that's pretty much all of what John of Damascus wrote about Islam. It's a short text and as he mentioned, he could have written much more. Nevertheless, not only does he provide a glimpse at what earlier Christians, those close to the origins of Islam, thought about Islam, he also provides some criticisms that are still valid today.